Yeah, so let's quickly discuss on this uh, DSO signature and encryption. This is a very important session now. So yeah, if you have anything, uh, please put in the comment section any doubt or confusion. So yeah, let's just uh, quickly discuss on digital signature. So what is digital signature? So yeah, it definitely uses PKI. We discuss about PKI public key infrastructure. So it uses PKI and what exactly it's, it's doing. So basically it relies upon the use of two related keys, a public key and a private key that together basically create a key pair to encrypt and decrypt a message using strong public key cryptography algorithm. So digital signature is, is basically what it's basically using the two keys that public key and private key using this only they're encrypting thing decrypting thing and how it's encryption decryption is happening it's basically using the strong public key cryptography algorithm. We can understand it uh, yeah, like how digital signature works in this. This is a basically definition of digital signature. Now let's see how this digital signature works. And in our case of SAML communication, yeah, we are basically doing the same thing. We are just signing the response and then sending to the receiver. Then receiver basically receives the message and trusts that, and then it will just go for the next step. So how these things are happening, let's understand in this session only. That's why I just told this session is very important. So let me remove this. Okay. Now let's see that you have sender. Okay, and you have a receiver. In our case of uh, PingFed also, right? You can see PingFed act as a receiver in one case, like when it received the SAML request and when it sends a response, then it is become as a sender. So in this, like uh, you can use this digital signature to make to make the communication secure and it's using also. But yeah, like in other, uh, uh, in other parameters, we can see that. So this is a receiver. We are trying to understand how this digital signature works basically and it's really going to help you a lot to understand the concept of this certificate and all. Okay. Now, what happened here? So first sender uh, have some message, right? Like sender is having some message. Sender is having some message and sender wants to send this message to receiver. But how it can send? Okay, because I just need to see that uh, in the middle there is a browser. So yeah, something can be, it should be ensure, uh, secure enough so that it, it can't be hacked or altered, something like that. So I just need to use digital signature to make this communication secure. So how this digital signature is going to make this sec communication secure? That's what we are trying to understand. Now let's see. So you have a message and yeah, sender wants to send this message to receiver. Now what will happen here? Like. This message first, what will have, what will, what it will do, the send, what sender will do, sender will just calculate first from this message the unique hash value of the file content. That means you have this message, so the sender will just calculate the unique hash value of this message. Unique hash value. Okay. So it basically just calculate, okay? I'll say here calculate. So the sender is basically just calculating the unique hash value of this message. It's basically just, if you can just go and read that, how this is going to be, uh, like uh, how you're going to create a unique hash value for some content, uh, you can able to get that. There are multiple software also. You can just directly put some message there and uh, it can uh, quickly give you a unique hash value for that. So yeah. Uh, there is some like a uh, 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 programming there. So using that, it basically just give you a uh, hash value for that content. But yeah, I just under, try to understand for now, the sender basically have some message. Sender just calculated the unique hash value for that message. Now, what sender will do? Sender have two, uh, a pair of key, right? As we understand in digital signature. So sender have public key and sender have the private key. So using this private key, what sender will do? Sender will just encrypt this message. Okay, this message will be encrypted. Using this private key, this message is encrypted. And why we are encrypting? Because we are encrypting to create a digital signature. 
the main goal here is to create a digital signature but you can't create a digital signature directly so this is a complete process process sorry digital signature so to create a digital signature this all things are happening like first tender have some message right now first we calculated the hash unique hash value of that message then we using our private key using sender's private key the message encrypted and then why it's where we are encrypting the message to create a digital signature now once this digital signature is created what sender will do sender will just send this digital signature ds i'll say as a ds plus message to the receiver and sender already sent the public key to the receiver before only okay already it has sent the public key sender has already sent the public key to the receiver in the earlier maybe in the initial step but in the next step sender first calculated uh, not calculated created a digital signature and sent that digital signature plus message to the receiver this is good right now once the receiver receives this digital signature plus message receiver has to verify whether it's correct or incorrect whatever right because i just need to make this ensure that the information is coming it's it's not elder it's not modified all those things basically there are three things we are achieving through digital signature there is a authenticity then you have the non repudiation non repudiation non repudiation and then you have the integrity i think integrity and authenticity you know right already we discuss what is this non repudiation this thing you already know uh, authenticity and integration sorry but what is this non repudiation non repudiation is basically it's just a uh, sender can't deny having sent the message later on like for example using uh, this we are achieving this non repudiation that means like if sender is sending some message then sender can't deny later that hey i haven't sent the message sender can't deny that so senders can't cannot deny having sent the message later on so by uh, using this digital signature we are achieving all these things authenticity non repudiation integrity correct so non repudiation is sender can't deny later that i haven't sent the message okay after sending that now let's uh, where we are so basically sender has sent the public key already in the initial uh, to the receiver and now sending the digital signature plus message now what receiver will do receiver receives the digital signature and message correct so first digital signature what it receives it will try to decrypt that first receiver will try to decrypt this digital signature okay using public key of the sender already that that has been sent in the initial using that i will say public key of sender ps using public key of sender it will first decrypt the digital signature and then get a hash value after decrypting it will get a hash value the receiver will get a hash value this is one thing it will do now receiver have this message also now receiver will try to calculate the hash value of this message how it stood here right in the initial sender in the same way receiver also just try to calculate the hash value of this message right because this is the original file now once it receive this get this hash value it will try to compare from the original that whether it's correct or not if it is matches then it's going to authorize the transaction otherwise it will stop so right what you are saying here so first like sender is just give sending the digital signature plus message how it's basically created first sender have one pair of key public key private key using private key uh, first uh, sender basically just calculated the unique hash value of the message and from that hash value it basically decrypted that sorry encrypted it has value using private key and then created a digital signature and then send a digital signature plus message to receiver now receiver is doing two things first it is trying to decrypt the digital signature using the public key of the sender and then get a hash value and then it will just try to calculate the hash value of the original message what basically sender has sent and then once it get so it just compare the hash value this has value basically compared once that is decrypted from the digital signature and once the hash value that is uh, calculated from the uh, message so these two things are going to match if it is matches if these two hash value one is coming through decrypted method from the digital signature and one is coming through the message right 
once it is compared and it's fine it's 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 matching then it's going to allow if it is not matching it's going to break that right. so how, what is exactly happening in the hashing so hashing is basically the process of transforming any given key or a string of characters into another value so basically i am just giving a message a plus b i want to calculate the hash value so it will just using hashing i'll get some some another value random numbers right which is uh, not going to easily decode it not easily it's, it's impossible to decode because we are just using some strong algorithm for that like we are using md5 sort to 56 like that and what is hashing algorithm it's a mathematical function that garbles data and make it unreadable so you have something a plus b which is readable if i just uh, do the hashing of that using some hashing algorithm like sart 256 then it's become unreadable i can't read that because it's a, a strong algorithm strong public key cryptography algorithm what we talk in digital signatures so sart 256 is a strong public key cryptography algorithm and we are just uh, encrypting uh, not encrypting i'll say we are just uh, making the just garbling the data right garbles data and make it unreadable so it's not readable readable that's a basic function of hash and you can just uh, decrypt how we just discussed in this digital signature uh, session right so this is very important and in the ping in the saml communication we are doing the same thing for example in the if ping fed verifies the user and trying to send the response so response is you can imagine saml response is as a message and then ping fed is generating a digital signature by using same way like using private key like first it will just uh, ping fed just calculate the hash value of the original message that is the saml response and then just uh, uh, yeah create like using private key just encrypt that uh, that message and then get a digital signature and then sending a digital signature plus message to the receiver that means to the service provider and then service provider will do the same thing like it will first uh, decrypt the digital signature using senders like ping fed public key and then get a hash value and then just do the uh, calculate the uh, like a uh, hash value for the saml response and then just try to compare that from the original if it matches then it will allow otherwise it will block the same message this is the same thing like what ping fed is doing this is the concept of digital signature right so yeah i hope you understand this part if you have still any confusion in like a digital signature encryption uh has value hashing hashing algorithm you can feel free to put in the comment section we can discuss but yeah this is a general flow like what is happening like sender is basically sending the message by just uh, calculating the hash value then encrypting to get a digital signature then sending that digital signature plus message then receiver basically decrypting the digital signature and then getting the hash value of the original file calculating the hash value of the original message and then just trying to compare that yeah and we are uh, what we are uh, achieving using this digital signature authenticity non repetition and integrity let's quickly discuss now on uh, encryption right let me remove this so I hope you uh, like understand this digital signature. This is very very important. If you just uh, want to explore more, you can definitely go through some some like uh, good articles or just try to understand like how like hashing is basically generated, right? Or maybe you can just uh, yeah see the programs and all how it's basically doing that. Okay, let's discuss on encryption. I'll show you what is happening in our case also. In, in, I'll just try to relate those things uh, so that you will understand like uh, why we are reading all those things. So encryption is basically a mathematical process of converting again human readable plain text to incomprehensible text, also known as cipher text. So I basically have the I have some uh, like like a human can read like we have, I have the text and I'm just converting that to a cipher text that is like in, incomprehensible text that cannot be readable. That's a basic thing of encryption. Now we have two types of encryption, right? Symmetric encryption, asymmetric encryption. So symmetric encryption, what is exactly doing? It's just using the same key to do the encryption decryption part. So that means like I have a message, like there are two parties, sender and receiver. I have a message. I'll just use key, key one, K1. Using key one, I'll just decrypt this message. Sorry, encrypt the message. Using key one, I'll encrypt the message. And then I'll send to the receiver. Receiver have the encrypted message, encrypted message, and receiver have the key one. So receiver basically decrypts this message using same key, key one. So here you can see that the same key one is used for encrypting the message at sender end, and same key one is used for decrypting the message at receiver side. So same key we are using for encrypting and decrypting. Whereas in case of asymmetric encryption, it's not like that. Like you are just encrypting with some other key and you are decrypting with some other key 
in asymmetric encryption that I'll give you an example in case of our ping fit only like let me show you quickly and then we can close the session and then we can jump for the VPS script okay <coughs> so you can see here like uh, you have the application I will say as application and here you have the ping for it acting as an identity provider okay you I'll just mention here that like this Ping Federate has to send like a SAML response message. Okay, SAML response, say as SR. Ping Fed verify the user, now Ping Fed has to send this SAML response to the application. Now, what Ping Fed will do, like this application have created one pair of key, K1, K2, K2 is a private key, and K1 is a public key. Okay. This K1 public key has been sent to the ping federate and private key is having k2 is having that and k1 public key has been sent to the ping federate now what ping fed is doing ping fed is before sending the saml response to the application ping fed will first encrypt this saml response using key 1 that is the public key of the application so using the public key of the application ping federate will encrypt this message and send to the application. Now what application will do application will decrypt this using key two that is private key. So you see here two keys we are using for encrypting and decrypting that's why it's called as an asymmetric encryption. So it's an example of asymmetric encryption right because First application generated one pair of key, public and private key. Public key it has been it, it basically sent to the ping federate who is going to send the SAML response. And using that uh, public key ping federate encrypted a SAML response and sent to the application. Now how application is going to decrypt that encrypted message? Because application have the private key and the people and the the, the I can say the party who have the private key that is only going to able to decrypt that message. If someone can able to uh, get this message also in the middle, uh, you will not able to do anything, right? Because you are the pub, uh, the you are not have the private key of this. Uh, like uh, 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 you not have the private key, right? If you have the private key of this uh, certificate, then only you are able to decrypt this message. Otherwise, you are not able to do that. So if you if somehow this uh, this response has been uh, taken also in the middle, uh, there is no beneficial. You are not able to decrypt that because you are not have the private key of that certificate. So that's an example of asymmetric. You have the you need to generate one pair of key. You can just keep private key with you. You can just send public key to the sender or to the person who is going to send some response. That person will basically encrypt the response or message with your public key and send back to you. Now you can simply decrypt that using your own private key that you're having. So you have the key one, key two. That's the concept of asymmetric. You are not using the same key. Whereas in symmetric, what happened? You are just using the same key for encrypting the message, and you are using the same key for decrypting the message also. That's a, but it's it's fast symmetric encryption, but there is uh, more security concern on that. But in this case, it's there is no any security concern. You can simply just yeah, use that and uh, yeah, you can just uh, make the communication more secure using asymmetric because you can see you have uh, you are generating a pair of key and then using one one key you are just uh, decrypting, uh, sorry encrypting the message and then another with another key you are de uh, decrypting that, and this is a flow happening between application and ping federate. Okay, so if you have any confusion in encryption, asymmetric, symmetric in this flow, please put in the comment section. We can cover, but yeah, this is a basic example of that asymmetric encryption. Like how you are just sending the key one to PingFed and Ping PingFed is basically encrypting that message and then sending to the application and then application is decrypting that with the private key of the application that is key K2 here. Okay, and then able to read that message. Okay, so let's uh, close this session and we can jump on the certificate management last session. That is, uh, we just need to talk about some VVS script. Okay, so yeah, thank you.